all about avoiding the grocery store these days for multiple reasons. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make the most amazing loaf of bread that looks like it came from a fancy bakery, but it only takes about five minutes to throw together and it requires zero kneading. So even if you've never made bread before in your life, you are going to love this one. So I've shown you a number of different bread techniques over the years. There's my basic beginner's dough, which is a really standard yeast dough that you can turn into all sorts of things. There's sourdough, of course. And this one is kind of almost a hybrid of those two techniques. And I dare say it's probably the easiest of all of them. So this recipe does require a little bit of yeast, but it also has a super long rise time, which gives you a ton of flexibility in when you bake it and how you bake it. Basically, you can mix up this dough, stick it in your refrigerator, and then just grab a bit and bake it up whenever you need it over the course of several days. So if you have my cookbook, this recipe is going to look familiar. It is the crusty Dutch oven bread in here. I've tweaked the ingredients a little bit because I just can't help myself. I'm always tweaking stuff, but the technique is pretty much the same. All the snorting and rumbling here in the background is this. This is what they do every single time I try to record a video. Okay, let's get to it. There are a lot of different versions of this recipe floating around. This is my take on it. And I've also made some little adjustments and tweaks over the years that I've found just give me a better loaf in the end. So I'll be sure to share those as we go. Here's what you need as far as ingredients, some regular all-purpose flour, some regular active dry yeast, sea salt, and water. Now the other thing that is important to this recipe and it can kind of put you in a bind if you're not prepared is the container that you use. This makes a hefty amount of dough and it grows over time. So you need to make sure you have a big enough container with a lid or a covering. A regular mixing bowl isn't going to cut it. So a number of years ago I just got these food safe Rubbermaid containers. They aren't pretty but they work really, really well for this. I mean, use whatever you have, but this is what I use and it gets the job done. All right, first things first, go ahead and put your yeast into your big giant container, then stir in the water and just keep stirring until that is dissolved. Now add in the flour and the salt. Now mix it all together. kind of a mess and it looks like it's not gonna come together. But this is what you want. This is exactly what it should look like. So don't lose the faith. So now basically all you need to do is cover up this dough, put the lid on and leave it on your counter for three to five hours. That is it. You don't have to worry about it being super warm or putting it in your oven with the light on or putting it by the wood stove. Just leave it on the counter and completely ignore it. Now, if you want to, only if you want to, this is not a necessity, you can come by every couple hours or whenever you think about it and fold the dough. This isn't kneading, it's a different technique. This will improve the dough's structure, but like I said, you don't have to do this. So today's a really busy day for us. We have a lot going on and we're headed to a friend's house tonight for a little get together and I need to bring something. So this bread works perfectly because it can do its thing while I'm doing other stuff throughout today. So if you haven't done any folds on yours, yours will look a little bit different. It'll probably have more of a flat top with more bubbles, but it's all good either way. Really happy with how it's feeling. I don't want to smush the air out of it. I just want to fold. There we go. I'm gonna leave it for another hour or two. When you're ready to bake, preheat the oven to 475 and put a Dutch oven with a lid inside to preheat for at least 45 minutes. I'm also gonna get my dough proofing here on the counter. So here's what we have now that this has been rising. I think it's about six hours as of right now. So you can see it's a lot looser and wetter than your typical yeast dough and this is exactly what we want. So now 
we just have to divide this in half without deflating the dough. So you don't want to do the whole punching thing like we do with regular dough. Just handle this as gently as possible. Now, because it's so sticky, I like to sprinkle some flour on the top. So here's what I do. I just kind of grab the whole thing and do my best to eyeball half-ish. And then without squishing this, we're not gonna knead it, I'm just gonna gently shape this into a ball. And I just kind of grab the sides and press it down until it gets tight on top. We're creating that tension in the top layer. You can still see the air bubbles in there, and that's good. I mean, if a few of those pop, it's okay, but we wanna save as many as possible. Once it's shaped to your liking, just put it on a piece of parchment paper. I'm gonna repeat with this other loaf. Now, before it sits here too much longer, I'm gonna score it really quickly with a serrated knife. You could also use a razor blade or there are special tools that bread makers will use, but a good sharp serrated knife will do the trick. Now, alternatively, if you get your big bucket of dough rising and then you decide you're just not in the mood to bake today, just stick the whole bowl or whatever you're using right into the fridge and it can stay in the fridge for up to three days. In fact, it actually gets better the longer it's in the fridge. So if you can, mix up that first phase of the dough on one day, throw it in the fridge overnight, and then you can bake it the following day. So while this is preheating, I'm gonna head out to the greenhouse and grab a little lettuce for supper. So our 45 minutes is up. We have a very hot Dutch oven, so I'm gonna carefully lower my loaf into this pan, put the lid back on, and stick it back in. I'm gonna let this bake for 30 minutes. Then I will take the lid off and bake it another 15 minutes or so until it's nice and golden brown all over the top. So Dutch oven is really important to this recipe and you can technically get away with just cooking it on a baking sheet, but the result is going to be vastly better with the Dutch oven. If you don't have a Dutch oven, but you wanna bake bread today, maybe just try some sort of cooking pot with a oven safe lid or bowl placed over the top. Our objective is to just capture that steam. So any way that you can do that, you're gonna be ahead. First 30 minutes is up, so I'm gonna take the lid off. We'll see how it looks. And he... Oh, pretty. Oh, steam, too much steam. <laughs> it's fogging on my lens. Nice spring from the oven. Um, I probably will just go for another 10 minutes and we'll see how we are looking after that. It's been about 10 more minutes. I'd say we're pretty close. I'm really liking the color. I'll show you that here. That is party. Now, if you're doubting yourself or you're worried it's gonna be doughy in the middle, you can use a thermometer and stick it in there. I don't usually do that, but I'll show you. We'll see what it looks like here just for fun. I just use one of these meat thermometers. Is there a bread thermometer? I don't know, but this is what I got. So it is right at 200 degrees. I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying not to burn my camera because that is something I would totally do. So I'm gonna pull it out. Can you hear it? Listen. So you know you're a little bit of a nerd when you get excited over the bread crackling or sometimes they call it singing. That's just the crust contracting as it cools down. So that's a good sign. So you're gonna be mad at me for saying this, but you really need to wait till it cools before you cut it. Because right now it's hot and all the steam is still circulating and it just needs to settle down and that will give you a better loaf in the end that won't get gummy and weird. But I suppose if you were just gonna eat it all in one sitting, it wouldn't matter. So do what you will. So we're headed to a friend's house for a little get together. I'm going to slice up the cool loaf. Have some
some brie left in my refrigerator, so I'm going to slice the bread into small chunks, put a little brie on it, and then when we get to our friend's house, I'm gonna pop it in her broiler for a minute. Now that you've mastered this no-knead -knee bread, sourdough would be a logical next step, and you can find my tutorial for that right here. <laughs>